Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Ghost Trick. On today's episode, we actually have a lead this time. As you may or may not recall, when we were last uh, on the phone trying to rescue the Justice Minister, we received the number at which his daughter has been kidnapped. Let's go check it out. It's the last one on the list after the moonlight cor Moonlit Courtyard. This one actually probably is across town. God only knows where it actually is. I really should pay the kidnappers had it a visit. After all, if we, went, if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery, but I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble, so I guess I'm in this for a little while longer. Chapter 11, just after midnight. By the way, we have a sort of loose deadline of about 6 a.m. It's about when the game decides that sunrise happens today. The Justice Minister's daughter has been abducted. The kidnappers demand the execution of the death row prisoner Zhao to be carried out tonight. Lin says the execution is a mistake, and I believe her. And so I'm paying the kidnappers hat out a visit and see what I can find out about the abduction. And here we are. There's a uh, beauty. That's actually her name, as it turns out, not just something that the uh, little guy calls her as affectionately. There's the guy with the trunk. Your instinct was right, beauty, my dear. They had that restaurant surrounded. It took me forever to shake them, and now my poor bike is ready for the scrap heap. Must be quite a bike to carry that gigantic trunk. Next time, maybe you should take it, make it a tricycle so you don't hurt yourself. Ouch, that hurts, beauty, but that's okay. That's what I love about you. Uh, just another abusive rela relationship in this, fam in this uh, game. And hey, check that out. That's awfully familiar. Be a little more gentle with our, with our valuable hostage, please. Yes, yes, always keep a smile on a lady's face, right, my dear? There, see that beauty? And there's a smile blooming on your face, too, my dear. Yes, a wry smile. People really need things spelled out for them in this game, don't they? So they got Amelie in there the whole time? That's pretty rough. I'm going out for a breath of fresh air. You're on guard duty. All right, I'll dream of you until you return. Why don't you open the trunk for our guest? I will, beauty. I was just taking a little breather. All right, little lady, let me open that trunk for you. Hmm. Any minute now. Or he'll just fall asleep. It looks like the Justice Minister's daughter really has been kidnapped, and something else is bothering me, too. I don't think I've ever been to this room before, but something about it has given me a strange sense of deja vu. I've seen something like this before. Yeah, for some reason Sissel doesn't seem to pick up on this, but yes, this is actually the same murder machine that was underneath the superintendent's office in the junkyard. I guess they sell them at Ikea or something, because everybody seems to have them. The, uh, murder machine. Actually, this one doesn't, if you look over here, this one does not have the gun that shot Lin in the face previously, just the birthday party poppers. So I guess the, uh, this is actually sort of a birthday machine, and maybe it, uh, the murder option, the murder, uh, accessory is optional or something? I don't know. So anyway, the first thing to do is to get to the other side of the room, like we always do. As usual, this is uh, quite the endeavor. So we can burn the candle, move these stars, uh, swing them a little bit. We can open this door, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, just largely to actually give us a few extra options. Move over. Move over here. to get into the fan, so the first thing you do is swing the star back and forth, Let's see how far I hope it goes, there we go, and it attaches to the fan, allowing us to get into the motor. We can use that to spin faster. That uh, moves that ball down, similar to, similar to what we had to do for the actual uh, murder machine mystery in Saving Lynn previously. So what else is there? We can move to these stars, but there's not much we can do right now. We can lower this shade. We get a hint from Sissel. Check out the ball. A ball that rolls off a table. I've already seen something like this. Yes, uh, we know. Let's discover. What we'll get to from here. Not much of anything, it turns out. We can move this candlestick, though. It's more set up for later. We can also get another hit from, hint from Sissel. This is one of those things you light with fire, isn't it? As long as there's light in the room, is it something like this really necessary? But if something can be lit, it kind of makes me want to light it. I need another core to reach the trunk and open it. I wonder if I can create a new core. Well, really, you can, because you see this doll right here. You can rock the shelf, but it doesn't really do very much, you'll notice. So, oh, sorry, that's not a doll, it's actually a clock. It just kind of looks like a china doll. Anyway, we can move back up now. See where else we can get to. See what else we can set on fire. 
We're doing pretty well with that so far. I don't think this actually does anything. Uh, spinning it again, rather. We'll do it anyway, just for, just for kicks. Let's uh, open the door, knock the ball over, and now we've got an extra core on that side of the room. Let's see. This puzzle is not particularly intuitive, it's really more just a sort of natural evolution following chapter 10, where we had a, a mundane puzzle, but one that sort of stretches the limit of how complex you can make puzzles in this game, and still have them be solvable. Now we're sort of re revisiting previous levels, sort of remixed. So now we can get down into the box that Dandy's sitting on. That, by the way, is his name. Darn. Oh, we do things a little bit out of order. I can't reach my destination from here. Uh, we were actually supposed to go in here first before being told that we have to generate another core to reach the box. But now we can get to this thingy, and this party popper, and this party popper the actual happy birthday part of the device. So we can fire that. Freaks him out. Just my imagination. As usual, nobody seems to notice anything in this game. Just my imagination, that's all he has to say. What an amazingly simple fellow. This room, on the other hand, is starting to look amazingly festive. The question is, how can I use it to my advantage? Well, let's find out. Fire this one, too. Give us uh, another spinny thing to use. Yes, yes, it was just your imagination. It's great that people let us do basically whatever we want. Hopefully that'll continue the rest of the game, right? Just my imagination? Oh, okay. If it was any more laid back, he'd fall right off that crate. But look at that streamer sp spinning rounds and rounds. How can I make use of that? I'll check it out. Now we've got another way to get uh, around the room. So our goal here is to get into the streamer. Or I should say, we don't need to get inside it, but we need to get back over to the candle, which we can use in tandem with the streamer to light it on fire. This is actually a pretty fun part of the game. We get to set a few things on fire. Do we do this now? I don't think so. So this is actually part of the puzzle. You can spin this to raise everything up and uh, put it in, in reach of the spinning streamer that we set up from the upper party popper. So we don't need to do that now, but we'll, get, we'll be back here soon enough. So now we can move to the box, back to the shade, back across the room. All of this is, should be very familiar by this by this point. The uh, solution here should be starting to take shape. Actually, we can make this spin faster now. Move to the other side. It should increase the uh, the radius of the, the spinning object by a little bit, so that when we burn, make this burn brighter, that sits on fire and lights that candle on top of the doll. So now, again, I showed that we can spin the little spinny thing, a technical term, I know, to raise the other streamers, and you can sort of see where this is going. This is also why we set that candle in place earlier. So now we can, again, back across the room, back into the box. Nothing particularly challenging here. You basically just play with everything and eventually you'll figure it out. Again, since, since this is not a death sequence, there's basically no pain of having to screw things up such, yet, such that you have to reset. It's actually pretty leisurely by comparison to the last two chapters. So we set that on fire, and then set the shelf on fire, and knock the clock down. There we go. Pretty well. Just my imagination. It must be nice to be so useless. And now we've got an extra core so we can open the trunk. Should have done this back in chapter 6. Hey, that's not Amelie. It's Kamala. She obviously subscribes to the uh, Kitaro Kujo school of being in prison. She's just checking it, chilling out there with a, a book and a cup of juice. What in the? What's going on here? This little lady is. Yes, thank you. We noticed. It's a nice abbreviated flashback by comparison to this game. Is this little lady re really a daughter of the justice minister? Well, not really. We've been on the phone with his wife. We know who his daughter really is. And uh, hopefully, one of them will pick up on that. By the way, if you go to the kidnapper's room while you're on the phone uh, in the previous chapter, you will find out they don't actually have anybody yet. Remember, Dandy only just showed up now with the suitcase. They actually, uh, they're actually playing a recording of his daughter. 
What's with the fun, bo fun book and juice? Like I said, always keep a smile on a lady's face. I wanted to treat our guest well. How about treating me well? I'd like some bread and milk, please. Nice bow. At your service, my dear. Be back in a flash. Hey, mister. Yes, cute little lady? More juice, perhaps? All you have to do is ask. Have I been kidnapped? She's pretty chill, all things considered, but they are very nice for kidnappers compared to the two snipers. Don't cry, little dear. There's nothing to be afraid of. The surroundings are miserable and filthy, I know, but we just ask for a little patience. Don't say those awful things about this house! Hmm? This house is where I used to live. Oh my. What? That is quite a shocker. I apologize, little lady. I'm the one who's miserable and filthy. Forgive me. What's the meaning of this beauty? Why here at this girl's old house? Don't ask me. It was the other party in our deal who chose this location. Oh, I see. It's been empty for five years, and apparently nobody ever comes here. But never mind that. What about my bread and milk? Oh, of course. This is clearly the most important part of this conversation. Now, you be a good girl while I'm gone. Was she drinking that whole time stuffed in the suitcase? How did they not spill the juice? You just read your book and drink your juice. I want to go home. She is home, sort of. Apparently. Not quite yet. So apparently, looking at the little cake on the side, this actually was a birthday party? This dilapidated place was Kamala's old house. What's going on here? That's what I would like to know. Anyway. Yeah, that's a shocker. What in the world? Why does the little lady have a core of the dead? When I helped her out at Lynn's apartment, she didn't have one. So that must mean she must have died sometime after that. And it also means somebody else must have saved her. I better ask her what happened. Man, this place is just full of surprises. Wouldn't you like to know what happened? Well, uh, we are pretty much at the end of the chapter and there's a long set of dialogue coming up and I'm not going to fit it in 15 minutes, so I guess I'll have to wait until the next episode of Let's Play Ghost Trick. See you tomorrow.